what is going on y'all baby bones here with another video and with rocket league going free to play i figured right now would be a great time to release an all-encompassing intro to rocket league video so whether you're a brand new player or somebody who just started getting into rocket league this is going to be everything you need to know about rocket league with that being stated i've split this tutorial into two parts the first part is going to be how to play Rocket League. So we're gonna be taking a look at actual in-game mechanics, positions, and decision making. The second half is going to be all about general Rocket League knowledge. So taking a look at bindings, matchmaking, settings, game modes. With that being stated, let's get into the tutorial right now. When you first load up Rocket League and join a match, it is going to feel very foreign and awkward, so just trying to make contact with the ball can be weird. We were all there once and it will go away. Now Sonix just added a new player experience, so check that out, but my first recommendation is to just go into free play under the training menu and just practice making contact with the ball. Make sure you are flipping into the ball with speed for more power. So just a simple drill, hit the ball, chase it down, and hit it again. Get practice reading the ball and seeing how the angles work and learning your bindings. As silly as this sounds, this is something I still do with over 2000 hours into the game. It just goes to show the skill gap in Rocket League is massive. Now while you are in free play trying this out, you will notice there is a max speed you can go. This is called supersonic. You'll know you're going supersonic if your car has trails behind it and the camera zooms out. Once you reach this speed, you cannot go any faster, so no need to boost anymore. On the topic of speed, there are two ways to gain speed in Rocket League. The first is boost and the second is flipping. Because boost is more versatile, you'll want to use it sparingly and rely on your flips to get you up to speed. Most likely you'll use a combination of the two, so practice boosting while flipping around to get up to speed in free play. Now these are the two bare mechanics of the game, how to hit the ball and how to get up to speed. There are a bunch more mechanics that make this game very exciting like aerials, double tap ceiling shots, air dribbles, etc. I have tutorials on a lot of these so check out my channel if you want to learn more. Just like so many other games, what you decide to do in Rocket League is just as important as what you are able to do. And with Rocket League being almost entirely skill based, strategy just becomes that much more important. Strategy in Rocket League is all about rotations. Rotations are when a player challenges the ball until he no longer can, whether that is because of a low boost or a loss of possession, at which point he will turn back to his side of the field, cycling around the outside of the play to the back of the line at which point the next person in line can now challenge the ball when you are cycling back on your rotation this is a great time to pick up boost you can pick up small boost pads for 12 boosts each or a big boost for 100 this is the beauty of rotations this means that there is always constant pressure on the ball whoever is going for the ball has boost and that they're the only person going for the ball in short the team with better rotations will score more and win the game now while you're inside of your rotations you're going to want to make sure to keep an eye on the opponents and your teammates so that you can predict where you'll need to be and where the ball will go. Just like mechanics, this is a very basic explanation of positioning and rotating in Rocket League. They will increase as skill level does, but this is a great start. 
Training in Rocket League has a bunch of different looks. As I stated earlier, free play is a great way to improve generally working on speed, your reads, and a lot of the unpredictable elements of Rocket League, but additionally there are custom training and training packs to help you with specific situations and mechanics. These are great for really ironing out a move as they allow for a bunch of repetition. You have to decide for yourself what you need to work on and which one would be best to train in. As far as practicing positioning and rotations, you can always save replays in game and then watch them back to see where you messed up. If you weren't sure where you messed up, a good rule of thumb is to see where you got scored on and then to go back and see what you could have done differently to prevent the goal. Now of course these are just tips for training if you just want to play that's fine because one of the best ways to improve in Rocket League is just by playing. The last mechanic I want to cover is going to be your ball cam slash car cam. This is normally binded to triangle on PS4 or Y on Xbox and all this is going to do is shift your camera focus between your ball cam and your car cam. Generally speaking, you want to stay in ball cam as much as possible to keep an eye on the play. The only times you really want to switch it off is to pick up boost pads, but you only want to switch it off to line yourself up and then you want to go right back to ball cam. The other time is when the ball is right on top of you. This will cause the camera to go a little bit wild. So just keep that in mind and try and stay in ball cam. This is going to bring us to the second half of the tutorial here where we start talking more about the general Rocket League knowledge. So first off, if we're taking a look at matchmaking, matchmaking in Rocket League is similar to a lot of other games and has skill based matchmaking to make the games more competitive. There are a bunch of playlists including casual, competitive, tournaments, extra modes, and private matches. Most of these are pretty self explanatory, I'm not your mother, you can figure it out. But we'll focus on competitive mainly as this is where 90 to 95 percent of games are played but all of the other game modes are pretty fun so give them all a try additionally when you go into matchmaking you'll notice that people really only use three cars these three cars are the octane the fennec and the dominus this is because rocket league only has a couple of hitboxes and only a couple ones that are effective. Of course you can use whatever car you want, but if you want to get the most out of the game, I recommend these three. The competitive ranking breaks down into categories based on skill and it's pretty intuitive. Generally speaking, you need a net gain of 10 to 12 wins to go up in rank, so from bronze 1 to bronze 2. and you need around 30 to 36 net wins to go up a full category, so platinum to diamond, for instance. Now, people mainly play twos and threes in competitive. Threes are how Rocket League was intended to play, and it is fast paced and aggressive as players can attempt to do more with two teammates to back them up. Twos gives a little bit more room to players to make plays but it has less of a safety net because you only have one teammate supporting you and ones is generally an unpopular playlist just because if you make a single mistake it's a goal but it is a great way to improve if you can handle the tilt in fact i have a bunch of friends that actually love playing ones so try them all out now just a general warning for new players coming into competitive it can get really toxic really fast the closest thing I could compare it to is road rage where everybody's just on edge and frustrated and thinks that they know better than everybody else. So just be aware of that and keep your cool in game because one, it is just a game and you should have fun and two, Sonix is not afraid to throw out the ban hammer for text chats so watch out. That being said, make sure to learn all of your quick chat binds so that you can spam out what a saves when somebody misses an easy save and just in general for some good hearted trash talk. Now personally I've found that when I'm in matchmaking, you should always just try and blame yourself because even if your teammate makes an obvious mistake, odds are you left them in that situation. and you can't control dummies. Now if we take a look at casual, casual is mainly for warming up, trying out new ideas, and generally speaking, not much tryharding occurs in casual. So if you're looking to practice your freestyles or just mess around, casual is the spot. 
tournaments are a pretty basic tournament structure and they give out cool rewards. Now tournaments in Rocket League can have the basic Rocket League rules or they can have any number of crazy mutators, unlimited boost, light ball, increasing the power of your hits by 500%. If you can think of it, they've probably thrown it in. Additionally, if you're looking for friends or tournaments to join into, you can find plenty of random ones on the tournament sites, and I do host them myself, so join my Discord server or keep an eye on my Twitch stream if you want to take part. The extra modes have the same ranking system as competitive, including Rumble, which is just threes with cool power-ups, drop shot where you have to hit the ground with the ball to open up goals that you can then score in, hoops which is just 2v2 basketball, and snow day which is 3v3 hockey. I personally love the extra modes but a lot of people aren't very interested in them. Additionally you have private matches which is just if you want to play with your friends, pretty self-explanatory but just like tournaments you can throw on all the crazy mutators to have some interesting moments. Finally guys, I want to take a look at your settings because anytime you join a new game you obviously want to get those settings right before you put in a bunch of hours and realize that you could have had way better settings in the beginning. First of all, your camera settings are how you actually view your car in game and the general rule is that you want to be close enough to your car to where you can make accurate touches on the ball but far enough away you can keep awareness of the other team, your teammates and just how the game is playing in general. Make sure you turn off camera shake because it is nauseating and you will get a headache immediately if you leave it on. As far as your controls go, you want your steering sensitivity up a little bit more than default. You also want your aerial sen sensitivity up a little more. That's usually about 1.2 is good. Your controller dead zone is how much you have to move the stick. So get that up to around 0.08. Your dodge dead zone is how far you have to move your left stick for it to register a flip input. And all the rest is pretty much intuitive. On the interface, you want to make sure that you turn up nameplate scale. Um, this is gonna help you see people better on the field. These are my video settings. This is about as good as you're going to get as far as performance without sacrificing any gameplay. As far as bindings go, there are really two main schools. The first school is similar to default with boost on B, however you will notice power slide and air roll have both been moved to LB. The second school of thought which I use is boost moved up to RB and in this way you don't have to hit two buttons at the same time with your thumb makes it a little bit simpler and opens up your game so try them out this being said y'all this is gonna do it for my ultimate beginner tutorial i hope that you learned everything you need and that you love rocket league as much as i do if this video helped you out please make sure to like comment and subscribe down below helps the channel out a bunch and if you want to reach out to me my socials are in the description including my twitch and discord and yeah have a good day or night